Hello, I'm Lucy Hawkins. Welcome to BBC News Now. We're going to start in Sudan with the devastating civil war that is fueling the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Let me show you some figures. More than 10 million people, that is 20% of the population, have been driven from their homes. Millions are at risk of dying from famine. The UN continues to plead for more support, calling it the world's largest hunger crisis. In recent days, the Sudanese army has ruled out any negotiated settlement, while its enemy, the paramilitary RSF group, has continued to make gains. Since the war broke out, almost all aid agencies have left Sudan because of the risk to staff. But now one of the world's best-known emergency medical groups, Doctors Without Borders, or MSF, is urging them to return. And I'm pleased to say that one of the key people making this call is MSF's international president, Dr Christos Christo, and he joins me now from Port Sudan. Very good to have you with us. I just shared with some our viewers me. some pretty horrible statistics about what is happening in Sudan. You'll know there is widespread criticism that this is a crisis and emergency that a lot of the world is ignoring. So can I start by just asking you, since you've been in Port Sudan, what are your staff telling you? What is the situation for people at the moment living there? It's more or less what you described before, and uh, I'm just coming out also from a meeting in the Ministry of Health where we have uh, come on the same page, identifying the huge humanitarian needs of the people. Uh, the people that they live in an already uh, fragile system, health system, even before the war. Uh, these days, uh, almost 70% of the health facilities have been destroyed or uh, looted or ruined or uh, activities have been suspended. On top of this, we have uh, malnourished people that they are growing more and more inside the internally displaced camps. And uh, of course, diseases are emerging and uh, it is difficult to access all these people out there that they are in uh, desperate needs uh, for medical care, for food and for water. How do you get aid to people and even with medical supplies, with so few hospitals, how do you help people? It's, it's difficult. Uh, we keep trying our best to make sure that supplies uh, come inside the country and we want to push and challenge authorities in order to let us uh, use more and more of the borders in order to cross them and come inside the country. And uh, it is also very important that we get permissions and uh, the very basic assurance that we can move inside and cross the front lines and reach also the population in the other side. This is why we keep negotiating with both sides in order to access these people. It's not easy at all. Uh, security are serious concerns and several times we have to pay the price. We have lost colleagues, uh, our facilities have been attacked and we have even to suspend activity. Dr Christo, what is the situation when it comes to hunger? At this moment, what we see from our uh, data and our uh, uh, hospitals and camps where we intervene is indeed that uh, out of um, uh, the three, uh, one person, and especially uh, pregnant women, breastfeeding women and children under 10, they have signs of uh, malnutrition, acute malnourishment. And uh, the 10% of these people that uh, they have these signs, they are also severely malnourished. And this, unfortunately, it is not just a seasonal pattern that we kept uh, seeing the last many years. What is ahead of us is also a rainy season that will make things even more challenging, more difficult in order to, to, to uh, move supplies in and uh, distribute food. So we are extremely worried about this. And that is why we keep calling and asking other organizations to come in. We want more food distribution to come in. And we want also the UN agencies to take over more of, uh, of, of these uh, responsibilities. That is such an urgent plea from you that we're hearing that other agencies need to come back to Sudan, but you've already outlined the risks to your own staff, that you've lost people, the threats to them. How difficult is it to convince these other agencies that, that you need them back? I understand that we don't all share the same, if I can say so, appetite for risk taking. But there are several different places inside Sudan now where there are not such security concerns as in others. And there are needs everywhere. So what we kindly ask everyone to consider is to start from somewhere. And uh, there are 
plenty of needs in places that are were quite safe, and we still find ourselves uh, in one of the very few organizations present. So let us start from somewhere, and we will see how it goes. Dr. Christo, all the best to you and your team in Port Sudan and across the country. Thank you for joining us.